What is this? What is this? It's sealed. It's a genuine Land Rover. Should we open it? I want to know what it is. Let's open it. Oh no. I knew it was too good to be through. The dang thing is dumping stuff all over the concrete. Oh no. Well, we're back and you saw the thumbnail, you saw the title, that's right. We picked up a 2010 Land Rover Range Rover HSE Sport supercharged 5.0 liter, 510 horsepower. Original price was around $85,000 for the way this one is specced out. And we got it for a winning bid of 5,800 bucks. 5,800 bucks. Out the door, $6,475. Think about that. We got an $85,000 SUV, right, for $6,475. I'm thinking that's a hell of a deal. Uh, I feel sorry for whoever had to take the depreciation hit on that sucker, but we got it. Everybody says not to buy it, man. I've seen Doug DeMero. I've seen, oh, I've seen Sam Cracks ordeal with his. Woo, boy. Uh, okay. And then Hoovy's Garage, the car wizard. Everybody's, like, recommending you to stay away from these. Never buy one. So I bought one. I figured, what the hell, man? Uh, how bad could it be? Well, we're about to find out in just a minute. I am at the Copart Sublot here on Portland Avenue in Oklahoma City. It's my first time here. I couldn't even find the place. I didn't even know this place was here. Um, but that's where it is. They're going to be bringing it out in just a minute, loading it up, and we're going to find out how bad it really is. All right, boys and girls, here it comes. There she is. Are you nervous? I'm not really that nervous, guys. For the price we paid for it, I'm not sure we could go wrong. The fact it still has its bumpers attached makes me really happy. <laughs> I'm real, real happy it's still got bumpers. Let's get her loaded up. All right, here she comes. Here she goes. And boom, she's down. Boy, she's a heavy girl. She's a heavy girl. Wow. Yeah, that sucker's big, man. That sucker's big. I don't have a lot of time to spend hanging out here, but uh, what do you think? Should we fire it up real quick, see if it runs? Looks like it's sitting a little low, but that's okay. She'll probably air right back up. Look at them wheels, man. Look at them wheels. Those are 255, 50, 20s on the back. We got DVD screens in the headrest right here. Look at that. More DVD screens. All right. We got lots of auxiliary inputs, rear heat and air conditioning. We got the Harman Kardon stereo system. It's like 14 speakers, guys. It's insane. 116,000 miles on the odometer. Look at this big touchscreen, or sorry, <laughs> touchscreen, right? fired right up there's your stereo system your center stack all your little terrain modes and everything right there Woo, super charged ignition is on press ok to clear press ok to clear it's upset that the door is open apparently look at this Wow we got our uh, our Range Rover key right here. Well, whoever thought there'd be a day I'd be buying a Range Rover, man. I'm uh, I'm kind of digging this. This is nice. Looks like the oil was changed. 312 to 21. Yeah, this is nice, guys. I think we need to strap her down. And uh, I wonder if the terrain modes work. Let's see. A lot of times these don't work. It looks like it does. Are you serious? It works. Almost every one of these I've seen, half the buttons don't work, the terrain modes don't work. Wow. All right, all right. Uh, I don't know what all these buttons here do, but 
I guess this airs it up. Higher, 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 higher. I don't know. Does the important window work? Why, yes, it does. Yes, it does. <clears throat> it still looks like she's sitting a little low in the front to me. What do you guys think? I don't know. I don't know. Right now, let's focus on getting it home. It runs, it drives, it's got all its bumpers. Look at that supercharged emblem right there. Oh yeah. The hatch doesn't want to open. That's all right. We'll figure it out when we get back to the house. For now, let's strap it down and uh, get it home. Then we can see if it uh, if it runs dry. Oh, there's a second key fob. There's a second key fob right there. It's missing a couple pieces, but yeah, there it is. How are you guys liking that 4K video I've been recording lately? It takes a lot longer to edit and upload and everything, but I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. So we got it here. I think if I pull this pin, because of how far back this thing is, I think it's gonna, I think the trailer is gonna kind of fold. We'll, we'll see. Let's just, let's just do it, man. Do it to it. No, it didn't. I totally expected this thing to fall off. Okay. All right, well, let's see. Oh, man, this thing is nice. It needs a hell of a cleaning. But aside from that, man, this is nice. Look at that Range Rover. All right, well, she's a runner. This will be our first, uh, Oops, I'm gonna get this out of here. Get this kind of sitting back here where it's out of the steering wheel. There we go. There we go. You can see the temperature gauge is up because uh, I may have been in here playing with it a little bit. Uh, I set the clock, the time and date and all that and I checked out the air conditioning and the cooled seats. All of that stuff works. We got a backup camera. Looks like that works too. The auto mirrors work yep all right well here goes nothing man look it's beeping it's like dude dude you're running me into the ground here you're all right you're all right old girl i'm being gentle not because of the suv i'm being gentle for my truck <laughs> my poor truck is like damn that thing was heavy like no joke this bad boy is heavy and then we got the uh we got the jag right there why don't we pull it up next to it we got uh, a jag and a land rover sitting right next to each other well we still got to take it on the test drive but i had to park it right next to the jag man the jag is actually going to be headed off to auction soon i'll put a uh, link in the description of this video that'll take you straight to it if somebody's interested the xjr runs and drives great now it hasn't leaked a drop of anything since we've uh since we fixed it down at the shop so she's ready to go so that one is going off to iaa stay tuned um like i said in the in the description box of this video you should have a link to take you straight to that car but this video is about the land rover range rover hse man there she is in all her glory it needs a really good cleaning 116,000 miles and i got a phone call from sam crack and he was like, listen, there's some things you need to be aware of <laughs> on these. Uh, boy, am I ever aware. I watched his videos and I swore I would never buy one. I would never, ever buy one of these. And then I did. Sight unseen, to make it even worse. This one was way out there at that, that Portland sublot. I didn't even go look at it. I didn't hear it run. What I'm noticing, though is that I don't hear any noise from the engine. And this was something that Sam Crack told me to be very, very aware of. Uh, let's pop the hood and let's turn off the air conditioning so we don't have any interference from uh, from that. Oh, I don't even know how to, there we go, it's off. Okay, let's turn off the cooled seats. We'll turn everything completely off. All right, there we go. Okay, everything is off except for the engine. Let's go ahead and turn the headlights off too. Just everything is off. 
Now the main thing you got to be aware of on these is timing chain issues. As most of you probably saw from Sam Crack's video, uh, timing chains on these will start slapping and rattling and clanking, making all kinds of noise. And a little less problematic is the uh, supercharger coupler. Will uh, the supercharger coupler will sit here and make like a knocking noise, like a knock, 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 knock. Well, there's no knocking noise. And other than fuel injection, I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything at all. Wow. I'm trying to make sure I get it from every angle so you guys can hear it. No. Listen to how quiet she is. The cooling fan is on. That's about it. That's about it. I see some uh, marks on the struts here. Looks like somebody had the front struts replaced. You can see where new bolts had been put on. So I'm gonna guess that these front ones have been replaced here. Looks like a relatively new battery. It's hard to tell, but I can't really see that far back there. There it is. Should we drive it? Listen to that. Man. Other than needing a really good cleaning, let's test out that air condition back here. Can we turn that on? I don't know. I think I may have it turned off up there. This is sweet though, man. This is, uh, I don't know, there we go. Look, you got a little, little armrest right here. Place to put your iPod. Man, she is, she's clean. She's really clean. I guess we could throw a tag on it. Let's go take her for a, for a quick spin. What do you guys think? Let's go. Oh, and what if I were to open the glove box and find a stack of invoices and receipts from work that's been performed on this vehicle? Wouldn't that just be amazing? All right, so first drive, legit. I took you guys along with me for the first run and we are on the road. I'll show you the speed and everything. We're doing almost 45 miles an hour and she's solid. The brakes feel good, the steering wheel is straight. I mean, no funny noises or anything. It's quiet. It rides exceptionally smooth. I expected this thing to be rough. Let's let's give it its first real pull. Are you ready? Woo! Wow! <laughs> wow! Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's no Hellcat. But it's not supposed to be. This is a this is a very big, very heavy four-wheel drive SUV. Speaking of big and heavy, there's a Toyota FJ. Yep. Guys, um, it shifts through all the gears. I think we burned a quarter of a tank on that pull. So I'm gonna guess the fuel economy is not <laughs> not very good in this. But uh, temperature gauge looks good. Everything seems to be solid thus far, guys. I, I'm truly impressed. And for the people on Instagram that are already saying the check engine light's burned out, it's not. The check engine light is right there. It comes on every time I start the vehicle. Uh, none of the lights are burned out. It legit doesn't have any mechanical problems that I can tell of at this moment in time. Well, so far so good, guys. We've put 16 miles on. It is out of gas. Like I said, she doesn't seem to be very, very fuel friendly. We're also gonna go wash it real quick just for the hell of it. I don't think it'll do a lot of good. I think we really need to take this thing to the Auto Spot LLC for uh, an appropriate cleaning. Uh, I'll get a hold of Brian. Oh, wow, that's a, that's, huh? Okay. <laughs> All right. 
let's uh let's throw some fuel in this bad boy man and see what she does we'll use our uh we we'll use our apple pay here and let's see how much uh let's see how much she holds bingo we'll do non-ethanol we'll say no to the car wash we'll do that in a minute all right let's see what a uh, 91 octane non-ethanol how much is that stuff 369.9 look it even says right there premium gasoline recommended you don't say i bet she'd be happy with some 93 unfortunately you just don't find that very often out here this is pretty much what we got you got your 87 ethanol then 87 89 and 91 non-ethanol that's what we got let's uh let her run and see where she ends at well she ended at 19 gallons 71 dollars and she's full so we know she's got a fresh tank of premium unleaded gasoline in her guys now we're going to run over to the car wash just the automatic real quick and uh Let's get her washed up, man. See if we can make this thing look halfway respectable again. Looks like we made it. Let's get this thing cleaned up a little bit. Here we go. Wanted to take just a minute to show you guys the gauges again. Uh, all the lights work, guys. All the lights work. And there's nothing. The temperature's perfect. I'm waiting. Believe me, I'm waiting. Just I know you guys are too. Everybody's waiting. You're waiting to see something go wrong. Hey, so am I. But so far, you can't fault this thing, man. We'll uh, we'll get her cleaned up. Hopefully, when we get out of here, it looks a little bit better. Let's find out when it's done. Well, we decided to put it to good use, man, and use it like we would use any of our other cars. So we stopped at Sam's Club and we loaded it up. So, oh, oops. Look at that. It's back to being a grocery getter again good old soccer mom SUV. Well, I just found a slew of receipts and I took the time to go through them because I wanted to show you, well, I guess I shouldn't show you. It's got personal information on it, but I can tell you what these receipts say. Um, most notably, uh, both front air suspension shocks were just replaced brand new. Over $2,000 just in the front shocks. The battery is new. The transfer case recently went out in 2020. Uh, the vehicle lost all gears. So it's got a new transfer case in, as well. Plenty of uh, receipts for new front and rear brakes, rotors, uh, tires, regular oil changes. The oldest receipt I found goes back to 2016. This thing has had a fortune spin on. Now I want to watch I want you to watch this real quick here, okay? Let me let me show you something. I want you to pay very close attention to the instrument cluster because I have just got so many people saying that somebody has put tape over some of the lights or or the lights are burned out. There's there's got to be lights. Okay, here we go. I'm going to start it. Watch the instrument cluster closely. Okay, watch the lights. You see the lights? Okay, you see they all went out? There you go. Now if I close the door, there you go. Oh, I've got the I've got the hatch open. Okay, tailgate open, and it's got a little exclamation mark letting you know that the, the tailgate is open. Let me let me turn this AC down just a tad there. There we go. Alright, so this thing has been has been very very well maintained guys it's in phenomenal shape let's take a look at what i found in the back so coming back here like th this gives you an idea of the level of uh, of of love they had for this thing right this is a genuine jaguar part you know what part this is it's the gas cap and this was also just replaced they didn't go to autozone all right they went factory with it now we'll start out by taking a look under here oh let's see let's see what we got whoa big mama that thing is huge that is a pirelli scorpion zero that is a massive massive tire you've got your jack handle you got your ginormous jack back here all right and i was wondering a minute ago like I see DVD players all over this thing, but where do the DVDs go? So I started poking around, and back here, I found this. Door must be closed prior to operation. 
It is a six disc DVD changer. And then of course you've got amplifiers and other miscellaneous stuff over here. You close this and you come over here. What's over here? Let's see. Oh, we've got lots of electronics. We probably want to stay out of there. In fact, let's close that back up. I think we should avoid that area at all costs. <laughs> we got a little cubby hole over here. I don't know what that is exactly. Uh, yeah, no clue what that is. We'll, we'll go ahead and put that back. And then I think this right here actually opens as well. Let's see what's under here. We have, what is this? What is this? It's sealed. Um, battery something contents one TSRC one seven source battery something. It's a genuine Land Rover. Should we open it? I want to know what it is. Let's open it. All right, you guys ready for this? I almost feel bad opening it because it's been sealed for so long. Urgh. Oh, heck, we might not even be able to open it. Good night. Oh, wow. What is this? There's a battery in it. What is this? What is this? This goes in the center console. I saw... I saw a thing in the center console, I think in the back seat, to plug this in. Let's go check it out. Okay. This is your rear seat entertainment system. Now, I can't get it to latch all the way down in there, but this has never been used before. Never been used before. And of course, you got your DVD player there, and you've got a DVD player there as well. And I believe you can play different shows, different DVDs on each individual headrest. All right, so what this is is a remote control. Unfortunately, uh, I ha it won't stay seated in there unless maybe if I close this, does that... I don't think that seats it. It's supposed to charge up. Um, and then you got an infrared blaster right there and you just point it and you can turn on, you can go home, you can select which screen, left screen, right screen. You can go through the menus and you can play everything individually from this remote control. So pretty cool that that's there and it's never even been used. Now, another thing I found up here is a six disc Clarion CD changer course there's nothing in it nobody uses cds or really dvds anymore but it's there it sounds like it still works how cool is that then you got your bottom glove box right here you still got your original books and everything that go with it look at all that lots of well there's some more receipts and stuff look at that this thing is such a joy to drive. I'm, I, it blows me away. I don't really understand all of this yet. I get that this one is for snow and as you can see it, it works. Like this actually works. Then you've got mud ruts. Recommended low range is selected for mud ruts program. Then we've got sand and as you can see it shifts into each one of these programs and finally, Rock Crawl. Select low range to activate rock claw, uh, rock claw. And then I guess your range selector is here. This is for roads. That would be, probably gotta put it in neutral. Low range, and that should light up. Bingo, we're in low gear right now. So there it is, yes sir. HDC on, we have differential lock. Look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. oh, you can feel that low range, man. We've got hill descent control active. This stuff works, man. It works. This, I guess, just raises and lowers the vehicle. I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's as high as it'll allow you to go. I think it's only got like two settings here and here, and then that's for when it's locked. Hill descent control is active. Let's get out and take a look at the wheels and see how high she is off the ground. Well, honestly, that's not that bad. I mean, it is fairly high off the ground, but 
nothing crazy in my opinion. Wow, okay. Okay, well the front is a bit off the ground there, yeah. Okay, this is cool. This is so cool. This is so cool, I love this thing. It is like, I mean, for me, it's a toy. This, this is a toy and it's super cool. We'll put it back in neutral. Uh, we'll go back to regular mode and it should switch everything back automatically. We'll go into regular all wheel drive. There it is, there it is. Now I can put it in park and we're back to normal. As you can see, everything functions. We can lower it. I think that's normal mode. Then we can lower it even more. And I guess that's a suspension locked at access height. Okay, I don't know what I just did, but I pushed a button and apparently put it into this locked mode. Now let's go out and take a look at the wheels again. Oh yeah, big difference. Big, big, big difference. Look how much lower it is now than it was. Well, anyway, I've got it back to normal ride height. You could, it, there's just so many buttons to push in this thing. It's so much fun. I mean, take a look at the, the heater and air conditioner, right? Uh, and, and it all works. It all works. The air conditioning is ice cold. You've got your uh, little display here for, you know, navigation, which it, it does have. Navigation works. You've got your four wheel drive mode. Rear entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can turn these on. Let's go back there and have a look. Let's see if they work. Not that anybody uses DVDs anymore, but I mean, you do have auxiliary. It does. It does. No disc. Six DVD and six DVD. And of course, you can always plug in your stuff down here. You've got a well, you got one for each side. Yeah, AV1 and AV2. You could bring your PlayStation in here and hook it up and you could play this. You sure could. I think I've got, the, yeah, I've got the rear air turned off, but you've got heated seats back here as well. You can choose floor or the vents right here. This is so cool, man. 14 speaker Harman Kardon stereo system. This thing is crazy and i know it's it's also crazy because it's so old it is kind of dated but for me this is like insane i couldn't imagine what a brand new one must look like so i've left it sitting here running for about 30 minutes while i've been sitting here playing with all the buttons trying to figure out how all of this works so i could show you guys so what i'm going to do is i'm going to back it up i'm going to put it in park we're going to go out there and look at the driveway and see if she's got any leaks oh no I knew it was too good to be through. The dang thing is dumping stuff all over the concrete. <sighs> Man. Moment of truth. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. This is all water. It's from the air conditioning. <laughs> Did I scare you? <laughs> gotcha. So I guess while we're on the subject of leaking, why don't we crawl underneath and have a peek? Well, you can't see anything. There's nothing to see under there. They've got everything under there covered up in plastics. Go figure. Let's see if we can take a look under here. Does that do any good? There's the transmission, I think. Somewhere up there. I don't see anything out of the ordinary under here at all. Boy, those wheels are dirty though. Even the car wash couldn't get them completely clean. Man, let's turn on the headlights. Make sure they work. Oh, look at those bad boys, would you? Those are bad, man. Oh, and I like the little, uh, the, the little lights around the rings, almost like a BMW, but not quite. Okay, that's kind of cool. Man, she moves, guys. I'm telling you, for a big, heavy SUV, this damn thing gets it, man. It, it blows my mind how quick this thing is. And I love the digital gauges. I love that, like, touchscreen-looking interface, even though it's not touchscreen. It doesn't matter. It's still really, really cool. Your horn is right here, too, which is a little weird. Uh, 
the cruise control got, listen to me everything works everything works on this everything oh well before i forget we're rolling up on the jaguar oh yeah hey baby you looking good how you doing so at the end of the day i'm sitting here trying to figure out what what do i do with this i could go to the bank right now and i could borrow way more money than i paid for it 64 75 out the door after fees winning bid was 5800 bucks my bank would loan me ten thousand dollars on this all day long without blinking i could get my money back plus some at an extremely low interest rate and just drive it until eventually it blows up so catastrophically that it's not worth salvaging anymore or i could sell it i could send it through insurance auto auctions we could let it go and let somebody else enjoy it honestly i'm torn i don't need this i have no real use for it it would be about as useful as the jeep that never got used to do any of the stuff that i bought it for so i don't really see the point in holding on to it it's fully functional this is the time to sell it anybody that's ever had one of these knows if you get one in this good a condition you better sell it fast so do me a favor comment below what would you do if it was your money on the line if this was your vehicle would you just enjoy it you know what's great about this is it's already older and you know it's well used you can throw your dogs in this your cats whatever you want to man you can just load up throw stuff in it go down the road and not worry about it you ain't got to worry about it someone puts a little scratch on it or a ding in it it's no big deal it's already devalued pretty much as far as i think it could ever go it's perfect now as you can see my truck finally has tags it took me a little while but she's tagged now and uh, that tag was $3,500. So, yeah, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, that was expensive. The truck cost me $6,475. You could round it up to $6,500 out the door. Uh, what could we get out of it? What do you think it would bring at auction? Maybe exactly what it brought today. Or maybe because some of you have seen this video and you can see for yourself that it runs and drives and everything functions as it should. There are no warning lights on and it's not because the light bulbs are burned out. It's been well maintained. Maybe somebody from YouTube will bid on it and say, hey, I want this. It's hard to find one that's sorted out and ready to go. Well, maybe you'll have your opportunity here really soon i'm still debating what i want you guys to do is drop your comments down below and tell me if you think i should keep it for a while and honestly though i have no use for it i probably won't use it i've got my truck and i got a hellcat uh this thing is nice but it ain't that kind of nice i just don't see myself really utilizing this thing um to the point that it would make it worth holding on to it. So drop your comments below and tell me what you think I should do. Should I dump it now and get my money back and be happy with it? Or should we hold on to it and just wait for something to break? I don't know. As I said, this one should be going to auction very, very soon. If, if it's ready, I'll have a link below this video. You guys can click it and it'll take you to the 95 Jaguar XJR6. All right, so keep a lookout for that. And uh, we'll figure out what to do with this bad boy right here. It is a, it's a mean one. And I really do enjoy driving it. I really do. I'm, 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 I hate saying it, but this thing is a lot of fun. 510 horsepower she is not slow there's a lot of things you could call this slow is not one of them it still has a great appearance today i think i think it is aged very very well this is an 11 year old suv that i think still looks absolutely phenomenal beautiful truck or suv or whatever you oh no Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> oh no. That's all right. It, it's unlocked. I... Whew. <laughs> Don't do that to me, girl. 
You had me scared. Guys, I'm gonna have to get out of here, but before I go, I did not listen to Sam Crack. I did not listen to Doug Demir. I did not listen to Hoovy's Garage. And I did not listen to Wizard. I went out and not only did I buy this, I bought it sight unseen. I never went and looked at it. I never listened to it. I just said, we're gonna do something different this time. And I, I, I went out on a limb. And at least for now, dare I say it, I shouldn't say it, but for now we have a perfectly running and driving, everything functioning as it should, 2010 Land Rover Range Rover HSE supercharged. Not a single thing doesn't work on this. And now you know what that means. In the next video, something really bad's gonna happen. You know, real quick, if you stuck around to the end of the video and you're still here, I got to thinking about it and uh, it just kind of hit me out of nowhere as I as I pushed the lock button on the Range Rover. Um, yeah, I know it's not a $150,000 car. I know what I paid for it, and I know that it's not the most expensive car on YouTube or anything like that, but I was just thinking that a couple years ago, just a couple years ago, I had purchased my first Copart car, and it was a Pontiac Aztec. And the video did pretty well for the size of my channel back then. I don't know, I had 40,000 or so subscribers, something like that. And in, in the matter of a couple years, I went from a Pontiac Aztec, then I think we ended up with a, a, a Chevy, what the heck was it, a, a, a Pontiac G3 or a G4, and we put a Chevy Cobalt front bumper on it, beat out the core support with a hammer. <laughs> this is my first time buying a Copart auction vehicle. As you can see, it still has all the stickers on it. We didn't, uh, we did nothing but literally buy this thing and jump in it and start driving. This is the 2005 Pontiac Aztec that I picked up from Copart for 500 and some odd dollars. This is at the Copart lot. This is, I literally got it just like this, sight unseen. And, you know, this is my first look at it in the Copart yard. Now, when the guy drove it out to me, it was barely even running. I'm talking like spitting and sputting and dying, and then you have to restart it. I'll be honest with you, this was not a good pick. That is where we came from. And today I have a Jaguar XJR sitting next to a Land Rover Range Rover. And I bought both of those cash. I didn't finance them. I didn't borrow money from them. I didn't put them on a credit card. I paid for those. And to think back to the Aztec when I was like, man, I'm going to try this out. After seeing Sam Crack's video, shout out to Sam Crack uh, for motivating me to start this channel off, to rebrand and, and redo basically my entire business into something that I had no idea if it was going to work or not. To go from that and working on the cars in the front yard, I didn't even really have, I didn't have a driveway or anything. I had a slab sitting out yonder. But to go from that to being where I am today and being able to buy these cars and bring them to you and share the experience with you, it's it's a joy for me. I really, I really enjoy it. I appreciate being able to do that. And I want to give each and every one of you that are still here a big shout out and thank you for supporting the channel and allowing me to continue doing what I'm doing. And I hope, I truly hope, that those of you that have been around since the Uberman days, yes, my channel used to be called Uberman uh, because I drove for Uber. For those of you that have been around from the beginning and you know my background and you remember where I came from and you've seen me bust my hump over the last couple of years to turn this into what it is today. I hope it motivates you because it's one of those situations. I'm no, I'm no special person. I'm not any more special than you or anybody else is. It's 
it's truly a thing of if I can do it, you can do it. Now, maybe not YouTube. YouTube's not for everybody. There's got to be something out there that you're passionate about, something that you enjoy doing, and you could turn that into something profitable. I did it. A lot of people out there do it every day. So maybe it just takes that leap of faith, that risk. Without risk, there is no reward. When I rebranded my channel from Uberman to Auto Auction Rebuilds, I was terrified. I thought, if this doesn't work, I lose everything. Like, it could put me completely out of business. And it worked. And if it hadn't have worked, that would have been tough. But I took the leap, and it was worth it. Sometimes, maybe some of you out there are watching right now, and you're just thinking to yourself, man, I would love to do this, or I would love to do that, but you're just too scared to take that risk. Look, I can't sit here and promise you that if you take the risk, it's going to pay out. I can't tell you that. All I can tell you is if you don't take the risk, if you never take that risk, you'll never find out if you could succeed or not. So do it. Even my dog is over here trying to teach, telling you, do it, man. Just go out there. Take the leap. You'll be all right. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Try again. Just wanted to give that, that little bit of uh, motivational speech to you guys because I feel like somebody out there could probably use it right now. Just like back when I was thinking about doing this, uh, there were some people motivating me to take the leap. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up button. Stay safe out there, guys. I look forward to seeing you all very soon in the next one. This time, we're really out.